are warm even to start today. In fact, warmer than they've been the past few mornings. I mean, there's a, a bit of a chill to the air compared to the afternoon in the morning, but wow, we heat up quickly. Uh, today going to 90 in Dallas and Little Rock. Atlanta's going to be in the 80s. Same thing through the Carolinas, all the way up through D.C., Tallahassee, 87 degrees. It's hot down here at the beaches, right? That sun is warm. Uh, now, as we find out uh, who's going to hit records, there's a lot of you. Fort Smith, Arkansas, 92. That would break the old record. Little Rock, that would break a record. El Paso, Shreveport come close in Shreveport, Paducah, Kentucky within one degree, 83. The forecast, 84, the record to beat back in 2000. So um, temperatures tomorrow are still warm in the southern plains and the southeast. You notice that we cool down a bit into the northeast. So we've got this one front coming through. It knocks us down to average and that's about it here and you know I guess it's not so bad to be average right um, above average might be too much we've got 85 again tomorrow in Birmingham that's one degree shy of the record Little Rock you'll set another record in Macon you'll come close Dallas 89 the forecast 90 the record so yes 90s are not typical this late in the season in Texas here I think of Texas as you know being hot but by this point in the season we're not hitting levels that high we're well above average we're hitting records obviously the jet stream is a big part of the story so the warm air that we're going to see, the really hot air, is going to be focused especially on the southern part of the country. And in the north, because of where the jet stream is, we'll get these fronts that come through. They're just not the strongest of the fronts. They're just average fronts. I heard our weather producer and Greg using that term today, and I love it so much. Yeah, they're not doing much. So the, to the north, you'll get some changes. To the south, though, we really don't see any changes thanks to this bridge of high pressure and temperatures heading up to some warm levels all across the central and southern plains, southeast, hitting some record highs as we get not just today and tomorrow, but into the weekend. Friday is still warm. Temperatures are still in the upper 80s, near 90s. Saturday is still warm as well here. It is a warm trend that we see not just through this week, but into next week as well. So what about these fronts to the north, Greg? Yeah, you know, they're going to try. Carolina are building back after being destroyed by Helene's flood water. Storm tracker Charles Peak takes us into a downtown art gallery that took on nearly 90 inches of water during the height of the flooding. Oh, yeah. at so many levels. Yeah, it, it really is amazing. And we, we see it all the time, right, in the wake of these, these uh, disasters, just the people coming in yeah. and, and helping. People, you don't know them, strangers, but yeah. coming in to help. And that makes such a world of a difference. Yeah, I know. But so, and so overwhelming, though, considering we've got North Carolina. We've got people still cleaning up yeah. trees down in South Carolina, in Augusta, Georgia, in Valdosta, Georgia. Um, and then, of course, um, from Milton in Florida, where we... Uh, we may see a couple showers on the East Coast today, but otherwise it's been pretty dry since we saw the hurricanes come through. Yeah, I think that has certainly helped out across a lot of the Southeast with it being so quiet over the last several days and continuing here over the next a few as well. Asheville, look at our forecast, keeping it dry. Temperatures in the 70s it does cool down a bit, though, as we get into the uh, weekend and early next week. But again, a dry forecast, which again helps us out. Yeah, and thankfully we haven't seen the, the heat like we've seen in other spots right. across the South. Yeah, temperatures in the 80s or even you know, 90s, I think we tough to do in the mountains. But that would be really difficult for yeah. people, you know, yeah. in the recovery. Fort Pierce, Florida, uh, we'll find temperatures in the 80s here. Uh, we've got a couple of shower chances, maybe today, maybe the end of the period, otherwise mainly dry. Tampa, another spot keeping it quiet as well. Mid 80s, again, a spot where we aren't anticipating to see much in the way of rain, maybe a few more clouds, again, through the weekend. But again, dry conditions here. We'll take that now uh, here in Florida to, 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 again, help us out with those folks who are still trying to recover. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of flooding around Daytona Beach here. Still folks, I'm sure, drying out, getting the, the drywall fixed in their houses. Daytona Beach, we've got uh, temperatures in the 80s dry. Until we get to Monday and Tuesday, there's the chance of some rain showers coming back in. Well, you know, we are in the... Uh, Zero clouds. Yeah. I mean, you look at the coastline here, hardly any all along North and South Carolina, and yet you see what's out over the ocean, and this can help generate the swells and the waves. Yeah, and that could oftentimes be one of the more dangerous times when the weather is just perfect. You don't mm -hmm. think that there's dangers in those waters, but unfortunately that's the case. There we have what's going on with Isaac here, or Oscar. Was it Oscar? Yeah, Oscar. It was Oscar. Yeah. <laughs> it was Oscar. <laughs> That'll be pulling away, so we don't have to worry about it in terms of direct impacts from that, but it is the flow around that driving in those winds here into the East Coast leading to the issues here in the waters. And we've had this rip current risk all week. It continues really, um, not just today, but through the next few days. High risk, especially in the coast of Florida. The onshore flow has really been this biggest driver mm -hmm. of it, and we've had that now nonstop for at least the last four or five days. Yeah, it seems like it. Wave heights here for us. Again, the biggest waves will be uh, working its way around Bermuda, so heads up there, and then actually increasing as the storm system moves its way north and eastbound. And some of those waves will propagate uh, westbound, 
and have an impact here again uh, along uh, parts of the East Coast. I mean, water temperatures are still warm enough to want to swim. Mid-70s, yeah. you know, um, especially when the air in the, is warm, the, the heat of the day. Uh, so again, beware of those waves. Let's look at winds. And, you know, overall, winds will be a huge factor. I think it's that wind direction that's the biggest problem. And that's it. The onshore push, that's going to be it here for us. Uh, again, around Bermuda, some of those winds will get a little gusty. Again, the main core of the system pushing away from the East Coast. But again, the general onshore wind here on the East Coast is what we'll find, although calming down here as we work our way towards the end of the week. All right, so just one last quick look at your forecast. Miami, the dry season is here. Temperature is going to be in the mid-80s and no rain or other major issues other than the rips at the beach. And our last stop takes us up towards uh, the Vero Beach area where we are going to see at least the chance, the chance for maybe a shower or two. All right, All right. Well, let's talk about what's going on in those tropics. We just talked about uh, what's left over when it comes to uh, what's going on there with the Oscar what else uh, do we have to deal with here, uh, Dr. Postel, in terms of the, the tropics at this point? You ready for... They're not going to be really good at doing either one of those things. That's the thing about these cold fronts. <laughs> That's right. I mean, we were talking about that. They're like average fronts, not even producing a lot of rain, but maybe bring our temperatures closer to normal. But look, the coldest day of the next, or I should say coolest day, <laughs> of the next six to ten days is probably going to happen on Sunday, where one of those fronts is going to scrape through the northern tier and bring some cooler temperatures, but just a little below. So find your city on this map and yeah. like Dallas 88. That's this is part of the coolest day. Right. I mean, this is the kind of pattern we are in. The West is exceptional, though. Yeah. This is where we actually have our storm track and some cooler air and some cooler air. That's yeah. right. And we can look forward to that over over the weekend. But, you know, really, it's kind of slim pickings. And when you look at the, the temperature now, this is now real time. And we're seeing a cold front moving through the Midwest, Jen, with some cooler air trying to come in behind it. Right. <laughs> Okay. Okay. 47 degrees in Minneapolis. To start your day in yeah. late October. Now, it is, it is chilly up here in North Dakota mm -hmm. this morning, but you are going to rebound. I mean, you won't be as hot as you were earlier in the week, but you still won't be that far from average. That's right. And that very same cold front will eventually bring temperatures down a little bit into the Northeast. There it will be today, Jen, with some scattered showers along it, but not too many of them. <laughs> I know. Right, so you can see how warm it is ahead of it. We've got, again, the warmth, the above average, the records potentially out there. The front goes through, it just sends us back to average. Sends us the average front. It's the average front, yeah. And that's one of two, at least, that we can see out ahead of it. This is the one that's going to bring those cooler temps I talked about uh, by Sunday to the northeast. But tomorrow it will be here, that very same one, and we'll have a little bit more moisture to work with. Yeah, and so there may actually be some thunderstorms here. Got to definitely keep an eye on this one. Yeah, the fact that we've had so much warm air to the south here, at some point, some of that instability is going to give us at least a chance of some thunderstorms. Yeah, and the Storm Prediction Center outlined this area for the shot at severe weather tomorrow. Not a whole a lot of it, but let me track this front. And there's the first one moving through today again with slim pickings on the showers, Jen. But then we turn our attention later on tomorrow to the plains where some more storms could develop. Yeah, and we'll see that risk uh, here again. Iowa, you look at your day on Thursday, it's fine until we get to the evening, and that's when the chance for showers and storms comes in through the overnight hours. Left behind by natural disasters, it raises a lot of questions about the long term impacts to our infrastructure and the way we currently assess damage can't always answer all of them. But now researchers at Texas A&M University are turning to AI to create a faster, more efficient way to assess hurricane damage. Dr. Robin Murphy, professor of computer science and engineering at Texas A&M, joins us now with a bit more on how it all works. Dr. Murphy, thanks so much for joining us. This is really an interesting thing that you guys are doing. Let's start at the beginning. Uh, where did the idea to use AI to assess hurricane damage come from? You know, the team have spent over a year working on a data set that AI can use to recognize hurricane damage. Tell us more about that. How did you go about creating it? Well, our what is the AI actually looking for when you assess the damage after the storm? And, and you mentioned how normal damage assessment can take days uh, to get it all complete. How does this shorten that, that time? Yeah, it takes input into your program. Is it drone video of the present uh, disaster? Um, is it satellite data? What, what's used? For hurricane damage, is there any uh, thoughts on using this for uh, other damage from other uh, disasters that could happen? Well, our data set includes valuable and with so much promise for what we can use it for in the future. Thank you so much for sharing. Dr. Robin Murphy, Texas A&M professor, appreciate you being here today. And of course, the efforts you and your students are, are working on as well. Hey, amazing technology yeah, and yeah. how it can be so, so helpful. Of course, October may be coming to an end, but we can't sleep technology.
We are transported now standing in Seattle where fall is in full swing and we've got some clouds moving in. Yeah, but you know, as the atmospheric river hose cranks up, we could see more rain and mountain snow here as we head through the weekend. Yeah, we are in atmospheric river season now. And so already it's been, I think, a busy start. The Northwest has been an active path, um, which we expect, of course, as we transition heading towards La Nina, we expect this Pacific Northwest pathway to be a busy one. Yeah, so here we are looking at uh, more moisture coming on in a couple of systems that we'll be tracking over the next several days uh, bringing us that chance for yeah gray skies and that mm -hmm. rain yeah so here comes the moisture we're going to see that as we get into uh, especially Saturday and then we get a break uh, it gets cooler behind that one and then another system poised to come in as we get into later Tuesday into Wednesday so we want to enjoy what we've got now yes, exactly <laughs> Exactly. All right. So uh, for now, you know, we do have some clouds around, but we don't have the precip that comes in big time as we get into this weekend. And especially in Oregon, that's where the bulk of this moisture is going to be pointed. We could have an atmospheric river level three. It's a category scale. It goes from one to five, five being the highest. So three is in that mid range. Yeah. So yeah, a decent rain is maybe more beneficial than anything, but nonetheless, still got to keep an eye on things here in terms of the rain adding up. Uh, for the Pacific Northwest into Northern California too. And then look what happens as we start to move into the early part of next week. Those greens change colors. Yeah. We go to the blue shades. Well, wintry weather. Yeah, that was on Monday. So those snow levels are dropping uh, by the time we get through the weekend. Wouldn't be surprised if we start to see some winter weather advisories out here for the Cascades. It could be affecting a past level. So this is the time of year you really got to plan for all these changes. Yeah. It's not just about driving on wet roads. You might be driving on snowy roads. Ah. Uh. Here we are. Yeah. That's the that's a good that's it a sign. It does feel right. <laughs> yes. right. That gives you the feel the, the change in seasons.